Hello, Scad. How are you this afternoon? Good? OK. My name is David Kwong. I am a magician and a uh, New York Times crossword constructor. That basically means I've taken the world's two nerdiest hobbies and combined them into one career. Um, but that's because I believe that magic and puzzles are the same. And I thought that I would um, introduce to you probably um, the best example of this, which is a uh, Rubik's Cube. Let's see if I can just solve this puzzle like a magician would. OK. Thank you. <laughs> it's a, the show will get better. Don't worry. Uh. Another illusionist, adept at mesmerizing audiences, is linguistic puzzler and magic man David Kwong. David's encyclopedic vocabulary challenges crossword puzzlers, while his masterful sleight of hand confounds the rational mind. David's performance amazed at SCAD, and later he pulled back the curtain on the man behind the mystery. So David, you are a cruciverbalist and a prestidigitator. I mean, that sounds slightly menacing. Explain yourself. First of all, well done, say, <laughs> saying them both. Cruciverbalist, it means crossword writer. Crusa is cross, verb is words. And then prestidigitation literally means fast fingers. Presto, presta, and digits, sleight of hand. Two passionate hobbies that I um, cross-pollinated to create something new. How did you learn to do magic in the first place? I was about seven years old. I saw a magician at a pumpkin patch, and it was a pivotal moment for me because he didn't just fool me, but he fooled my father. Oh. My father is a biochemist, this mm -hmm. omniscient mm -hmm. scientist. When he pulled one over on my dad, I wanted to have what this guy <laughs> had. I have the periodic table of the elements here. I'm going to um, try something with this rubber band and some, um, some mind reading. Here we go. Boom. OK, I'm going to try something here. I need you to think of your element. I need you to send uh, those words to me. Think of the first letter. That'll help. And let's try for this. Um, thorium, indium, erbium, potassium, and sulfur. Have you heard your element? Sit down for me, please. Did I get all five? All right, OK, not bad. Thank you. And then my mother, who's a history professor, has a love of words and writing. And we played Scrabble when I was probably 12 years old. And I started doing the crossword puzzle. The light bulb turned on for me. And I thought, you know what? All magic tricks are puzzles. Mm -hmm. Let's put them together. Shielded this, a crossword puzzle in a magic show. And I'm going to teach you how to build one in the style of the New York Times. Are you the only person who is a magician crossword puzzle creator? <laughs> I think so. There is a tradition in the past of magicians who have liked puzzles because these common elements of confounding people. But nobody, as far as I know, who is a crossword maker, a professional New York Times constructor. Now, what else did I put in the puzzle? I actually made a word at an angle, thinkers. The reason I chose thinkers is because it starts with the letters TH. And TH is the chemical symbol of one of the elements that was thought of before by the five of you. That's thorium, followed by IN for indium, K for potassium, ER for erbium, and I think the last one was sulfur. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for your help, ladies and gentlemen. That's thinkers. So David, being a successful magician has a lot to do with body movement and you're on the stage, you're acting, and when we think you're resting, sometimes you're working. That's perceptive <laughs> of you. We do our secret moves when no one is paying attention. And it has to do with body language and body posture and if we all want you to focus here. This is probably not when we're doing the secret move. It's when we kind of relax and make a joke. <laughs> That's when I'm stealing something from my pocket. Probably magicians pay more attention to detail than anybody else. Mm -hmm. We prepare every single thing, and then we pretend that we're unprepared. <laughs> That's right. That's the secret to every magic trick. If we seem unprepared, then you don't suspect that we're a step ahead um, of you. There, I should be able to get one card to pop off the top of the deck which is the king of spades. Is that what you have, the king of spades? Am I totally wrong? What did you have? Ace of clubs. OK. Let's see if I can change that to the ace of clubs. That's better. OK. Oh, now he's getting good. Can you talk right. a little bit about 
how you put together a performance and the artistry involved. I think a good magician, like a good director of a movie and like a good designer, is someone that can make you look where he wants you to look. But a great magician and a great director and a great designer can make you feel what he wants you to feel. And he takes you on a journey that will surprise you and leave you awestruck. And hopefully it's an emotional experience too. As a magician and a puzzle guy, I have areas of expertise and I found ways of making myself unique in Hollywood. So I would bring to the movie business a knowledge in illusion and deception which can translate into bank heists and con games. And so I started consulting on movies like Now You See Me, which is all about magicians. And do you see your card here? No. That's because you're looking too closely. And what have I been telling you all night? The closer you look, the less you see. And then I have this, um, TV show that I consulted on. It's about a woman who wakes up in Times Square, her memory's been wiped, she doesn't know who she is, and her only clues is that she's covered head to toe in tattoos of puzzles and secret codes, and every week it leads to a different mystery, and you start to discover who she is. On Blindspot, David's mind-bending skills enriched the show's narrative, embedding clues and puzzles within the plot line. Pretty clever, huh? Took me forever to work it in there. You solved one of the tattoos. David helped devise Jane Doe's tattoo mystery, and he even inspired a recurring character on the show, also named David. 